Well, Fred, he's not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, but he is kind of sweet, and he likes to play, but he's also kind of lazy about it. He just sort of lays there and lets me do all the work. That's all right. I like him anyway. He keeps me entertained. If you're looking for excitement, or maybe waiting for all the Hollywood special effects, don't hold your breath. This is about all Fred does. But really, it's kind of boring around our house, and we don't really like too much excitement. So Fred fits in just right. He, uh, he basically is here to keep Buster entertained, because otherwise Buster would drive us all nuts. All right, let's get to work now. All right, guys, let's show you how this thing looks from the top side as it operates. We'll start with automatic mode. Okay, so the record is playing and the wheel is turning. Okay, remember we're on that dead spot on the gear as long as the record is playing. Okay, we're going to hit the reject lever and watch that right there. See that? Now this little arm here is what engages that little, that little partial gear. Now, now we're turning and uh, you see the tone arm moving. These uh, d deals here are moving. Actually, these are. These, these are not. These are just little rests. Okay. Going through the change cycle. Boom. It's going back to restart the record. Okay. Playing again. Let's show you one more time. Playing. You hit reject. It moves that lever. Engages that partial gear. Partial gear goes past the little pinion gear. Now the pinion gear engages with the big gear. And uh, that that moves the tone arm, moves it out of the way. The record drops from here as this thing turns. And now the tone arm will come back down. One more time. Watch this and the tone arm, okay? And that little lever for the reject. Bang. Reject. Lifts the tone arm. Tone arm moves over. This little deal here moves the record. Moves the next record on the stack, okay? That record is dropped down. Now the needle comes over and starts at the beginning of the, the record. Piece of cake, right? These guys here are just adjustable rests for the different size records, okay? There's for the 12-inch record. That's for the 10-inch record. That's all that is. It's just a place for the record to sit. And then as this thing goes around, it, will, it, it grabs a hold of the next record and slides it down because the... Uh, the, the spindle is bent and it creates a rest and this will push it one record at a time off of that rest and down onto the spindle. Now this, this little top leaf here will keep uh, records that are above this bottom one from falling down. So remember the stack is sitting here and you want the bottom record to drop down. This leaf here, the thicker leaf, will push that record over a little bit and drop it down and this leaf here keeps the rest of them from dropping down. So I've already cleaned and lubricated this little part right here. Um, this here I'm going to clean in just a minute. There's nothing to that. Just clean. I'm going to clean this little spot right here and lubricate it a bit. Very, very small amount because now we're on the side where the drive is, right? I don't want to have a whole lot of lubrication floating around up here because I've got that idler wheel and it's got to stay dry. Um, I, I will worry about lubricating the spindle bearing later. So really all I'm going to do is just barely touch this one here, and then I'm going to go about cleaning this whole thing. Cleaning and polishing is kind of dull, and it takes a long time, so I'm going to do that off camera. Well, guys, it was delivery day today. Yep, I kept FedEx and UPS and even USPS quite busy today. I'm going to show you here in a couple of videos just what it is I'm doing. But uh, I'll bet you can guess if you look close at these boxes. And I'm trying to learn some new skills here. And uh, I'm really eager to show you. So for right now, I'm just going to leave you guessing. See if you can't figure out what's going on with all this stuff. And uh, I, will, uh, I will show you in a few days. But for right now, I just kind of want to show you that it's actually gotten a little crazy in here. This is supposed to be my big empty room for listening to music. And uh, I've turned it into a warehouse. I think i got to fix that. All right, it's time to do what I can with this motor here. There's really not much that needs to be done. I have already, already cleaned, you know, the outside of it with some lacquer thinner. And uh, kind of 
got everything to where it looks better, but that really doesn't affect how it performs. But what I am going to do now is, it already turns freely, so I'm not terribly concerned about loosening up anything. I don't think there's any nasty grease in the bearings, because it sure doesn't feel like it. So all a motor really needs when you have that situation is, if you look really close, you can see there are some felt discs that straddle, they're like felt washers that straddle the motor shaft, one on this end and one on this end over here. Those felt washers are intended to be a sort of a storage place and dispensary for lubrication. So what you do is you just simply put a drop of lubricant, maybe two drops if, if it's really dry, a drop of machine oil, uh, I use this Singer sewing machine oil, on each of these discs and you spin it a little bit and the idea is that that lubricant will wick through the disc and then ultimately wick down to the shaft as the shaft kind of consumes that oil and it dries on the shaft in the bearing more of the lubricant will be drawn out of the uh, the washer onto the shaft so that's all I really need to do let me show you how that's done and then that's this motor is ready to go back into the the record changer Usually, or a lot of times, I'll see them where people have packed grease down in here and stuff, and that just messes them all up. Okay, so I want to put a drop of oil on the screwdriver like I, like I did. I did it off camera, but you get the idea. And you come down here to that, and you just touch it. Now, you're going to touch other things by accident, so you may have to do it twice. But, uh, you know, the, the, the whole idea is to get enough lubricant into that washer so that it will wick, you know, it will kind of hold on to it and wick it when it's needed, but don't get it all over everything else. You see how it just soaks into the washer. Let me do it up close, one more drop. It's probably too much, but it won't hurt it. One drop won't hurt it. Okay, so you take this drop of oil, and you kind of present it to this disc right here, this felt washer. Just touch it, and it'll soak right in. And ultimately it will wick throughout this washer here and then down onto the shaft which will take it down into the bearing. Once you've done that you just turn it. Nothing to it. I've already done that end over here. And we are good to go. Now what you can do if you want to be sure the motor is going to be fine is you go ahead and test the motor. And I'll probably, I've already run the motor but I'll, I'll test it again just to be sure. I cut an ordinary line cord off of a, a beat up solid state radio that I was tossing and I attached these test leads to it. So now I have something I can plug in at 120 volts and I plug it into uh, an isolation transformer, all right? And then I have 120 volts available to me at these clips. Well, now here I look at the uh, record changer. The record changer has this plug that plugs into the, the uh, console. So I'm going to go ahead and plug one side of the 120 volt here, one side of the 120 volt here, and it really doesn't matter which side goes to which, it's AC. And I'm just going to lay it down here. Now I've also got it on my Variac, so let me turn on the isolation transformer. There we go. Okay, you go ahead and watch this fan, and I'll, I'll start the motor up. Oh, I guess I need to have the switch on. There is a switch for this guy that mounts in the cabinet. There we go. Well, the other side of the coin is I need to plug in my line cord. I'm not having a great morning, guys. I think I need more soda before I get started on this stuff. All right. Now let's try. I don't know if the switch is on or off, so we'll see. Switch is off. Now if it doesn't work now, I'm just going to throw in the towel and go upstairs and watch TV. There we go. That's at 60 volts. 90 volts. 120 volts. Okay guys, we have ourselves a nice little motor. Nothing's hot, nothing's warm, everything's good.
turns freely, I think we're set. The next step is we're going to have to mount this thing into the record changer using some rubber mounts. Okay, it came with these rubber mounts right here. These are not available. I'm not able to find anything like it. I suppose maybe a chassis mount washer might work. But to get this thickness will be difficult because they're big and I'd have to cut it down. What I'd like to do is find something that is intended for a record changer. And I, there are two styles that I have on hand. The two, si the two types of mounting uh, rubber that I have for record changer motors are right here. Neither of these are the right size. This big one here is the right height. But it doesn't, it's too big here that the, uh, the diameter inside the slot is too big to fit into the hole in the record changer. I tried, it won't fit, it drove, it, I just about tore one up trying to get it to fit, so that's not going to work. Not only that, but the little bushing that the record changer mount stud goes through is, is too small. I mean, this hole is far too big for the bushing. So this one here really isn't going to work. As tempting as it is because of the height, it's not going to work. My other choice is this little guy right here. As you can see, this little guy is far too short, okay? But it's the right size to fit in the hole. The hole here is roughly the right size. It's a tapered hole, but I can live with that, okay? This one, this one here is not tapered, but I can live with the tapered part. See, the bushing fits in there much better, and if I take a little bit of shrink tubing, just a little slice, okay, and I mount that shrink tubing right in here, make this part of it a little bit thicker, then it'll fit in that taper a lot better, and it'll fit more tightly. But here's the, here's the rub. It's too short, obviously. Okay, this is the part that sits above the surface of the record changer um, mounting plate, and the motor sits hangs from it, but then you have the screws mounting it here. So that um, is really not a critical thing because the way this mounts is the motor comes up from underneath, okay, and then you thread down the hardware. The motor is suspended with this part here providing the flex, but it's suspended from this. And the only dimension that matters in terms of lining everything up is how thick this part here is right there. And that is roughly, you know, it's a little thicker, but it's something I can live with. It's roughly the same thickness. So that part's going to be okay. So they both would suspend. And this part here, being a little thinner, is not a big deal. You know, it's still going to be plenty flexible for it. It may not be, if anything, it's not going to be rigid enough. It's, this is a little more flexible than this guy. But I think I can make that work. And the, the motor studs are threaded all the way, so I can thread all the way down onto this, and that'll be fine. But, but this little flange being the same, this is not going to matter. It's, they're gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna, the motor is going to be the same distance. The motor shaft is going to be the same distance, regardless of which one of these I use, um, in, relative to the idler wheel. So I think this one here is the way to go. It's not structurally as, as rigid as this guy is here, but I think it's going to work. And I'm looking closely, and the truth is, actually, two of these are in really good shape and are reusable. Only one of them is hardened and not reusable. So what I think I might do is just use one of these, then I'll use these other two. Since that dimension up here, this, this height really doesn't matter. The rigidity that I get from two of these versus three of these, I think will help me to firm up that motor and I'll just use just this one of these and it won't affect it as much. Let's see how that works, okay? Uh, it may sound like convoluted logic to you and hey, maybe it is. We can always take it apart and try it the other way if we need to. So let's get started on mounting this motor up in the record changer base plate. I got to thinking, I thought before I mount this motor, it might be a little, it might be better for me to go ahead and shoot a little deoxid in the switch now rather than later, and I'll clean this wire up too. Now, I don't need to go crazy with this switch. I just basically need to get it wet down in there where the contacts are, which I'll have to basically go in these cracks here, I think. Get it wet where the contacts are, 
and then uh, then operate the switch a bit. Maybe I can get this to come apart. Let me try this. Ah, look at that. I don't need to go in any cracks at all. I can just I can just come in here and get this switch directly. Beautiful. Look at that, guys. I don't need to do much. Just want to clean it up so it'll continue to operate correctly. People tend to overuse deoxid, and I've been giving that some thought, and maybe I'm one of those people. So I need to think about how much of that stuff I'm using. I complain all the time about how expensive it is. Well, there's two ways to approach that. Look for something cheaper, or use less of this, and uh, it'll cost me less. So let me just see. So I'm operating the switch like you're supposed to. All right, do a real quick flushing spray. Alright, operate it a couple more times and then call it good and that should be fine. Dry off the excess. Make the switch look a little cleaner, eh? Doing this now makes it so I don't have to do it later. It'd be one of those things that gets left to last, and then I'm getting eager to finish the job, so I prefer to just get it out of the way now. Just real quick touch it here. I think that's going to do it, guys. I'll go ahead and put this little box back on there. That's pretty cool. We are good to go. Let me real quick wipe off these wires. I don't, I don't want to do much with them, but I would like to just make them look clean. Remember, they're not they're going to be visible if somebody wants to see them, but they're not going to be the kind of thing that attracts attention every single day. So try to make them look as good as I can, but don't go crazy. See that that's it's cleaning them up. It's making them look not decent. So Get some of that goo off of them, and they, they always look better. And you just go up the length of this thing and wipe it down thoroughly and get all the grime off of it you can without taking it apart. It's not necessary to take it apart. It's these little details that that make a difference when that the owner of the radio looks at the radio for the first time. They see dusty wires, well, they're not nearly as impressed as if they see nice clean wires. They don't have to be uh, new wires, they just need to be, you know, cleaner, right? There needs to be a difference between the way it looked when he brought it and the way it looks when he picks it up. Not sure what this goo is, but there's some goo here causing me trouble. You never know what happens in the history of a radio to make it icky, you know, make it gooey. This could be some kid's Kool-Aid from the 1950s, you know what I mean? You just don't know. Brief exposure to the lacquer thinner won't hurt this rubber insulation. And uh, I'm not going to, it's not going to be exposed for a long time. I'm just cleaning all the goo off it and then I'll dry it off right away. See the difference? It isn't perfect, but it's a whole lot better. And when the, they see this radio, they're not going to notice that it's not perfect. They're just going to notice the better part. And that's cool. Every now and then I run across a perfectionist. But um, my response to a perfectionist is, it's an antique. It's supposed to look old and not look perfect. And honestly, if, if you expect things to look perfectly new, well, then you shouldn't be doing antiques. You should be buying new stuff because you'll never ever 
It'll never look right if it looks perfectly new. I've heard the argument that, well, it was new at one time, and I'm just trying to achieve that, and that's fine. But I have found that you can never really succeed in achieving the new of what this item looked like new. What it will look like is like fake new for now. You know, it's not... All right, not fake news, you, you Trump fans out there. I said fake new. So it'll, it'll, it won't... It'll look new, but it'll look new like, you know, not like it looked when it was, when the original part was new. It'll look new like it was just made yesterday, and that's not the same. And I don't, I don't really like that. That's why I've really slowed down on restoring cabinets, because I haven't yet mastered, um... I haven't yet mastered making it look just nicely preserved versus making it look all shiny and brand new. And I don't like the all shiny and brand new. And that's, right now, that's really the only thing I know how to do very well. You know, I know how to polish it and give it a piano finish, but these radios never had piano finishes, so there's no point in doing that. All right, that looks better. I think we'll call it good there so we don't do any damage. This plate right here mounts on the motor like that before it goes up into the record changer so I might as well set it in place right now alright let's move the record changer into position we'll get started here alright guys you can see the three holes here on the top and I'm trying to decide which of the two holes I want to put the the original uh, mounting snubbers in and I've decided they should be the two that are the farthest apart I'm going to go ahead and mount this, this first rubber into the hole. It's good if you get it a little bit wet. You do it how you want. Use your imagination. And you mount it with the big part facing up. Okay. Now I usually, since it's wet, I'll usually turn it a little bit and make sure it's all the way in there properly. And that's how I know. Okay. Pardon my hand being in the way. It's tough to do this without getting in the way. All right, there's number two. And we'll go ahead and put the new one in for number three. Now, last thing I usually will do is make sure by doing this that it's well seated into the slot. Okay, great. Our grommets are in place. Now, what we want to do is put the motor in from underneath. So let's tip it a little bit, and I hope you can see this in the camera. I don't know. What I'm going to do here is take the motor, really simple and line the motor up with the holes okay see that line the motor up with the holes and just slip it on in oops wait forgot something guys I forgot that I have some bushings to think about they have to go into the the grommet there we go oops that one wants to fall through so I'll hold it with my finger from the other side Okay, now I can go ahead and I got the plate on the motor, all right? I haven't loosened any of the nuts that are on the motor itself, so I don't have to worry about checking that. And just slip it down into those bushings. The one bushing keeps wanting to fall out, so I'll just push it back in from the top side. Now I'm going to hold it with my hand as I turn this over. Okay, now you see the motor coming up through here. Really simple. Put a flat washer on each one. Now I'm I'm going to worry about the flat washer on this one here shortly because I'm going to try something. Now for the two that I put the flat washer on, I'm going to go ahead and put a lock washer on. Now the way the reason that bushing is there is because this thing is actually suspended on this this little rubber here, but it's 
you the bushing makes it so that there's a gap between the top of the rubber and this washer when you're mounting it. I'll just tighten it hand tight for the moment. I'll tighten everything later. To take up this space here, because I'm not real excited about having that much space there, I want it to be roughly the same amount of space that exists. You see how this, now watch why, why I care. This motor drops down onto that. But if this, this gap is too big, then this motor is going to want to pivot away. See, it's going to want to pivot. So what I want to do is put something here to take up that space. It doesn't have to be real soft or rubbery, just something to take up the space. Well, I have had for the longest time um, several boxes of these little plastic washers. I once moved into a house where these boxes were just, there were large, fairly large boxes full of these things and some brass ones and some aluminum ones too. And they were going to throw them away. So I went ahead and asked if I could have them. I thought I might have a use for them in cars way back then. This is way back around 1997. And um, the, the landlord said, yeah, sure, go ahead, you can have them. Uh, the guy used to make, he used to do something with fishing reels. I don't know if he repaired them or he did something. He, he, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not a fisherman, so I don't know what these would be useful for. But they're useful for me, and here's one way useful for me. I took a couple of these things and I drilled drilled the holes a little larger so they'd fit over that bushing and they just fit over that bushing right and they'll take up that space now that gap is going to be roughly the same I'll go ahead and mount that flat washer on there and I misplaced the nut if you can believe it and the lock washer so I've got to come up with a new nut here to fit that but I think that's not going to be a big problem all right I found a lock washer and I found a nut and uh, we'll go ahead and get these tightened down on there. It's a little different outside diameter than that, but it's not going to hurt anything. All right, we'll put them all on finger tight. I think that's going to work, guys. I will tighten these once I get this thing installed. In case I need to take it out again, I don't want to flatten those lock washers. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and mount this switch. So all I need to do really is connect the ohm meter up to these two, two pins on the connector and see which position I have continuity. Then I know that's on. I am all thumbs today, guys. Okay. All right, we have uh, infinity there, which obviously is off. And 29.6 ohms, which is the, uh, I'm sure the DC resistance of that motor winding. So there we go, that's on. I'll leave it in the on, actually I'll leave it in the off position. I'm going to leave that switch in the off position. I'm also going to mark it so that if I get confused later, I don't have to do this again. Oh, off and on. Okay. Since I'm here, I can go ahead and install this guy. Now that little screw looks awful. So I'm just going to see if I can't clean it up a tad. No big deal. Again, it's one of those first look deals. You want it to look, you know, decent when they first look at it. Don't over tighten it. This is a sheet metal screw. It'll strip easily. There we go. Nice and smooth. You'll remember that this cable mounted right here. Again, another sheet metal screw, so take it easy. Just kind of get it started and then slip the cable under it. And then you'll snug it up. Now, this motor lead needs to come down here, so do that now. 
I should have thought of that when I was installing the motor, but I can get it now, I think. One wire at a time. Here we go. There we go. Okay, and this this will be out of the way when it's in the records when it's in the machine, so that's no big deal. Okay, and then go ahead and tighten that down. Again, it's a sheet metal screw. Take it easy. There you go. Motor's installed. Like I said, Fred's not too bright, but he is fun. And he's about as good-natured as a golden retriever. In fact, <laughs> we call him the golden retriever of cats. Wifey was trying to see just how much he could take. <laughs> and uh, he may not be all that smart, but he is persistent. Fred, I think your brain has a short circuit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to blow a fuse. So if you hate cats, just skip the next minute or so. But if you think cats are all right, just kind of watch Wifey play with Fred and mess with his mind a little bit. Is it hurting? I think his brain is hurting. Does that feel good? This is the kind of thing that would tick Buster off. So it's kind of nice to have Fred around, because Fred can take it. <laughs> he doesn't, still doesn't get it. <laughs> You're too weird. Next time we'll hit the tone arm. We'll get that done here quick, and we'll be done with this record changer. Are his little claws out? Yeah. He's going to nail that thing. <clears throat> That's it, Fry's little brain. So, from your western outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael, and that's all for now.